Okay, so let's review. Again, what I was trying to convince you of today is that these problems are all very similar to each other. This is our basic equation for doing these, but this is more complicated than Newton's second law. We still need to identify all the forces. We have to figure out which of them are going to give us a term to plug in here. Uh, if you're conservative, it doesn't go in here, and if you're perpendicular to the movement, it doesn't go in here. In many cases, you'll end up with the, this as a zero, and when this is a zero, you can use conservation of energy. But we did do one problem today when this wasn't zero, because friction was decreasing the energy, and then we used the left-hand column for step, um, for step uh, four. But most of the problems will have the conservation of energy. Mostly we're working with gravity today, but you can see that springs are not that much more complicated. You just have a different term, you just have a different formula for calculating the potential energy. Uh, and those are the only potential energies you'll see this semester, spring potential energy and gravitational potential energy. Next term you'll learn about uh, electric potential energy. We saw that lots of things tend to end up being zero, so you've got to watch out for that, and you've got to be careful with the signs. Uh, I wanted to point out, um, let's see, some of the problems that we did today you could have done in other ways. For example, remember that friction problem that we did before? How long would it take friction to bring this to a halt? You could have done that just using Newton's second law and kinematics. You could have used Newton's second law to figure out what the acceleration would be of the object and then use kinematics because the friction is going to impose a constant acceleration. But that would be more complicated because then we'd have to find the acceleration. Yeah, that would be kind of two steps. First, you would have to use Newton's second law to find the acceleration. Then you'd have to use kinematics to do that. So I think it's better at this point to use work for that problem. Uh, but this problem you can't use kinematics for because the spring force will be constantly changing. We know that originally the spring is exerting no force, and then the more compressed it gets, the bigger the force would be. Well, since the force is changing, the acceleration would be changing. And when you have a changing acceleration, you can't use kinematics. So this is a problem you can pretty much only do using conservation of energy, um, at, least using the, at least without using calculus. Um, and uh, this conservation of energy actually makes this quite easy to do. So conservation of energy lets us answer a lot more questions than we could have done when we, all we could do was constant acceleration kinematics. Okay, well I gave you this handout. Um, so it's good that uh, we finally got to go over some material before you did the homework. So I hope that when you're doing the homework, you'll try to kind of follow along with these steps and see how they apply. Of course, we didn't talk about every single thing here, so you shouldn't be uh, worried if there's some things that don't make sense. Let's take a look at one of the other handouts. Um, yeah, so I didn't go over this handout on how to determine the work done by individual force. Um, but let's, uh, we, we were doing that. Let me actually just point out the highlights from that. I wanted to point out especially step three, how to determine the work done by an individual force. How to determine the work by an individual force. Step three, notice you can't determine the work unless you know what direction the velocity is in. Because if the work is parallel to the velocity, the work would be, if the force is parallel to the velocity, the work is positive. If it's anti-parallel, the work is negative. And if it's perpendicular, then it's, it's zero. So also again, don't skip step five. Step five is to determine the sign of the work based on the relationship with the velocity. On the other hand, remember that the velocity is not a force. So you should draw the velocity vector, but not confuse that with the forces. So we've really been using, so this is something else you should look at while you're doing the homework, so that you're going through a systematic method for calculating the work that's being done uh, on an object. And on the other hand, out, I uh, summarized uh, the different types of energy. So translational energy is 1 half mv squared. Gravitational energy is mgh. Spring energy is 1 half kx squared. Um, one thing we didn't get to today was rotational energy, but uh, there's a term for that uh, as well that maybe we'll get to uh, in the future. Okay, good. Okay. Something that's going to be tough now is you guys have learned three different ways to do problems. Kinematics, Newton's second law, and work and energy. Well, in the midterm, how do you know which one to use? So how do you know when you should use work and energy? Well, if there's a problem that involves velocity, this is probably the, fat, the best approach because the velocity appears in the kinetic energy term. And if there's a problem that involves distances, this might be a good approach because the potential energy depends on your vertical distance and work depends on distance as well. So when there's problems about distance and speed, um, this is a good approach. On the other hand, if there's a problem that's about, say, acceleration or time, this wouldn't be a great approach because acceleration and time don't appear here. For acceleration and time problems, maybe you need to use Newton's second law and kinematics together. But when there's a question about velocity or distance, you usually want to use work and energy. Sometimes you could use either work and energy or Newton's second law in kinematics, but now you want to be getting into the habit of using work and energy whenever you can. So watch out for questions about speed or distance. That's a clue when this is a good approach instead of the methods that we used before. Okay. Yeah, thank you.
These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.